It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of September 5th, 2003, Labor Day weekend, and um, one of the worst Labor Day weekends of all time in terms of box office. I mean, it's a, it's a weekend that, for the longest time, was the lowest grossing box office weekend for Labor Day of all time until, uh, more, until more recently, what happened with COVID, but I don't think anybody really counts that, but you have to wait at least five more years when Bangkok Dangerous opened up. And barely made a dent at the box office. But these two movies that came out were films that were clearly films that the studio had no hope in. Just dumped them out there. And this was the biggest new release of the two, if you want to call this a big release. But um, that is David Spain and Dickie Roberts, former child star. So as the story indicates here, David Spade plays a child actor who fell into obscurity as an adult and attempts to revive his career by getting a part in Rob Reiner's next film. In order to do that, he's going to have to rent a family out for a month. And um, I didn't think I'd ever find a movie that would take a st storyline out of Surviving Christmas, the y movie that came out a year later, but there you go. Like, I completely forgot that these two movies are pretty much the same film. We'll delve more into Surviving Christmas because that mo movie is far more of a cinematic disaster than this movie is, although this movie ain't doing itself any favors. I mean, there are some fun ideas overall. Like, I do like the idea that they got all these different former child stars to come in here and just make fun of themselves. I mean, that's kind of fun. Like, I, I like the idea of that s the scene where uh, David Spade's playing a card game with, like, Blake Garrett, uh, Barry R Williams, Corey, F uh, Dust not, uh, Dustin Diamond, Danny Bonaducci. I mean, that's a fun idea overall here. Corey Feldman's also in here, Emmanuel Lewis, but... It's pretty much a, a lackluster Adam Sandler movie. I mean, it's not as bad as something like The Hot Chick or anything like that, but it's still not a great movie either. I mean, when they have to use, you know, celebrity boxing as a, as, as a pur pur purpose for one part of the storyline here, you know how dated this movie is pretty quickly. I mean, celebrity boxing wasn't even on the air when this was the movie came out. That thing was like a year of a thing that they did two things of, and then they never did it again. That was in 2002. This came out in 2003, and the humor is pretty lackluster. Like the whole, I get it, the whole idea is that he's supposed to have a childhood again, Dickie, David Spade's character, but come on, man. In the stroller, a, an older guy in the stroller, but like that, you know, him having the hots for his mother, which then again, it's very McCormack. I mean, have you seen her? Jesus. I mean, private parts in plain sight. I mean, I'd be in that same situation too if I was in the... David Spade shoes, but still, it's just like, you get the obvious jokes there. I mean, there's not really anything that clever or funny in this movie. And there's definitely there's definitely signs of something that could work here, but this just really goes to show that in terms of films, David Spade just, once Cliff Farley died, I mean, it really was really tough for him to go out on his own, because he and David Spade, which is, he and Chris Farley, which is such a great comedy duo that sadly never really went anywhere after Chris Farley died, but it's not to say that David Spade isn't a terrible actor, per se. I mean, it's, I've seen him be funny mostly on television. You know, Just Shoot Me was a, is a very funny show. He was great on Rules of Engagement. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff on TV that's actually really funny, but when it comes to movies, he's very hit and miss. I mean, Joe Dirt was fine for what it was, but it definitely was a film that wasn't a great comedy overall. And this just feels like there's pieces there of something that could possibly work, but it just doesn't really amount to anything. You get the same mediocre jokes we've seen done over and over again. The jokes are really aren't that funny. They don't really do a whole lot in terms of the story. You can kind of predict how it's going to turn out, and it just doesn't really end up going anywhere that you think this, that this could probably go. And I mean, I would say that this is basically a, t a bad TV pilot, but legitimately, this was originally a TV pilot. I mean, this was something that Paramount uh, Saturday Night Live, when Fred Wolf and David Spade were on there, they actually wrote a sketch for that for the show that Macaulay Culkin hosted, but they eventually cut it. And then the WB was going to do a t They've sent the idea to the WB, but they turned it down, and so on and so forth. It was actually a dark comedy at one point, and then Adam Sandler came in and said, we'll make it, and lo and behold, we have the movie here. I mean, it's just... The jokes really aren't that funny. Good ideas in here, just wasted opportunities overall. Just a film that had some potential to it, but just never really got to that point where it should, should have been something very funny, but it just it just didn't really do it for me. I mean, it's a film that, it's not that great, but again, 
I'd rather take this over some of Rob Schneider's terrible comedies in there. There have been a lot of bad comedies from Rob Schneider. Uh, like I said, Hot Chick, terrible film, but at least this one is at least somewhat tolerable, but not enough for me to recommend it, honestly. So, um, yeah, that's Dickie Roberts' former child star for you. The, the biggest new release of the weekend, barely making $7 million to be the number one movie at the box office. That's how bad the, the box office weekend was for that for this movie. So, With that said, let's move on to the last movie we have here, and that is Heath Ledger in The Order. The truth is, The Sin Eater is not the actual title of this movie, although it's the working title of it. I mean, they even say The Order in the trailer, I mean, but it's originally called The Sin Eater, and that's not a good sign when you take a title that sounds pretty badass and just change it to The Order. I mean, what kind of a title is The Order? I mean, when I think of this, I don't think of a, I don't think of a Da Vinci Code-esque thriller. I think of, like, a movie where a comedy that takes place at, like, a McDonald's or something, but maybe that's just me, but, um... The Order. You have uh, Heath Ledger uh, as the centerpiece revolving around the investigation of the suspicious death of an excommunicated priest and the discovery of a Sin Eater uh, headquartered in Rome. And, um, I mean, good cast overall in here. Heath Ledger, Shannon Sossaman, Mark Addy, Peter Weller. And speaking of Ledger and Addy, I, did not be I couldn't believe this until I looked this up here. Guess who directed this movie? Ryan Helgeland. Ryan Hogan is a pretty damn good filmmaker. I mean, this is a guy that wrote L.A. Confidential, Mystic River. He directed Payback. He directed The Knight's Tale. He's done stuff like 42 and Legend. This guy's a really good filmmaker. How the hell did he get involved with this movie? I mean, just wow. This is a film that, like I said, this was before Da Vinci Code, but you can see a lot of Da Vinci code as similarities in this film. Also throw in a lot of exorcists. I mean, we were trying to... This is what this is still around the time when the exorcist was still relevant because the re-release came out a, year, a couple of years before, the director's cut version. And we were about to have exorcists at the beginning of the following year. But as far as this film goes, it's just... It's not a very good film. It's a very lackluster film. You really can't tell exactly what direction they're trying to go for here. Do they want to be more like The Exorcist, or do they want to be like more of this mysterious thriller film? And when you get to the actual thriller aspect and the mystery aspect, it just doesn't work. And it's a film that just really, it really just falls apart on a number of different levels. And it's just a film that you really expect a lot more from, considering the talent on board, considering who's wrote, written and directed the film. I mean, Brian Helgeland has done a lot better than this movie. This is probably the this is easily the worst thing he's ever done as a filmmaker. And he's done a lot of stuff, but, I mean, I'm sorry. When you do stuff like L.A. Confidential and Mystic River, and you've done so many other movies that have actually been good, and you make something like this, not good, not good. Not good indeed. But then again, that's why they dumped this out on Labor Day weekend, because they, the studio probably knew it was bad, and just decided, screw it, we're going to put it out here, hope for the best, and um, no, not so much. And yeah, it's it bombed pretty badly. $35 million budget, only $11 million taken in. So that's, that should pretty much tell you everything you know about this movie. The Order, uh, I'll pass on that, thank you very much. Uh, even if you call it The Sin Eater, this thing probably would have been dead on arrival anyway. So with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies, and we finally get out of the doldrums of the dumping months, because next week we have four movies, most of them very notable, including the third installment of the El Mariachi trilogy, Antonio Banderas and Salma Hayek in Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Nicolas Cage in the criminally underrated Matchstick Men, Eli Roth's directorial effort Cabin Fever, and uh, Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson in Sofia Coppola's Lost in Translation, so... We're definitely back, getting back on the right track on the next episode, so we'll take a look at those films next time. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So, with that said, I am off. I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, take care.